Hello, and thanks for joining me today. We've got a big topic, but I'm going to introduce myself as Dr. Linda Codner, and I have a previous foundation in pharmacy prior to turning to natural health. And it's really a supplementation to what I learned in pharmacy. It's not an and or, as we all know, we have to integrate our health and use best practices from wherever to uh, benefit any situation or condition that we're trying to treat. So as I said, it's a big topic. I wanted to cover off on heart medicine. And uh, as a North American society, uh, heart health is a big, huge issue. And um, a lot of that can be attributed to um, not just diet, but also the way we live. So lack of exercise and the hectic pace of life that we put on ourselves and expect of ourselves that contribute to a lot of the symptoms that I'll go into in a few uh, minutes here. But because it's such a big topic, there's like um, information I can provide that's very practical and uh, informative. So if you're going to need anything more, um, please join me and uh, book an appointment or watch for future courses with more detail. So we can talk about the physical aspects of our heart. It's a muscle. Um, it's an organ uh, of some density and it, it does a lot of work for us. It has a huge electromagnetic field. So when um, we use um, different devices that can measure uh, electricity, it's actually got a bigger electromagnetic field than our brain. So it goes to show you just how significant this amazing organ is in our body to um, demonstrate that. So besides the um, physical aspects, let's also talk about the energetic aspects of our uh, heart organ. And it's because it's also associated to our brain and many cultures believe that the heart contains the soul so on an energetic level the authenticity that we need to speak to one another comes through our heart and not through our brain and there's way more we can talk about that but i'll leave it at that for now the relationship of our heart is also very important it is uh innervated by information coming from our brain but it also highly communicates with our lungs. Now, the lungs in Ayurvedic medicine actually pump the heart. So it's of significance, this relationship. And when you take it extra steps further, the lung is associated to large intestine and the heart is associated to the small intestine. And that's the yin and yang relationships of those organ systems so the health of the large intestine will affect the lungs and the health of the small intestine will affect the heart and perhaps it goes two ways now i in the description i mentioned that we have four chambers this is the mini version of a quick um, anatomy lesson. So we've got four chambers in the heart, the atria and the ventricles, left and right, and we have four major valves. And these are of significance when we want to talk about the symptoms that are going on in our um, bodies or what we're receiving as information when these things are out of sync. The rhythm of the heart, so the, the synchronicity of all those eight things in, in a healthy way will give us the production of circulation and moving the amount of blood that we carry in our bodies. And I, I believe it's something like um, five liters of blood, you could say, that this um, pump or muscle has to provide nutri nutrients from our digestive tract to all different aspects of our body, as well as the oxygenation or the oxygen from our lungs and the exchange of the uh, byproducts of the nutrition. That means the debris has to be taken through and out to the bowel and to the kidneys. And then we also have to um, take the gases that are exchanged, the carbon dioxide, in other words, 
back to the lungs so we can exhale that out. That's the mini version of how what's going on with their heart. So now I'm going to just talk about a few of the symptoms that we experience when our heart isn't at our healthiest. We can get things like a pain in the heart. Now, stabbing sharp pain could usually mean a blockage of some sort and that can be a mind blockage it can also be a nervous system blockage or um, something in the circulation not allowing the blood flow to the actual heart muscle itself spasms mean the muscle is spasming and therefore there is an electrical charge problem or there is a chemistry problem so that would be the explanation there Palpitations, again, a muscular and a nervous issue. Anger, shock, and fright is enough to put your uh, innervation of your a firing of all the neurons that are required to make a muscle contract or expand. So this is important when we're looking at the emotional sources of heart pain. We can also have... Um, Oh, a d diet will also impact um, the electrical disturbances. So if we're not getting enough electrolytes from our vegetables and fruit, um, then we have issues of not having sufficient supplements. And we're going to burn through those supplements more um, or those vitamins and minerals when we're under stress or tension or fighting an infection. All of these things will have an impact on the electrical disturbances uh, and the muscular contraction of the heart. So dilation of the heart usually means that the chamber of the heart is tr trying to enlarge, just like any other muscle, the demand is there. So it's growing larger because it's having to push against a resistance, just like a weight resistance. So the heart will get larger if there is more peripheral, that means in the other parts of your body, your arms, your legs, your abdomen, there is constriction. So therefore you get a blood pressure increase and you get an enlarging of the heart as it tries to do and push against a gradient where there is restriction. So the rhythm of the heart is also something when we talk about AFib, it's a disturbance in the electrical forces, therefore back again to the vitamins and minerals that help balance the nervous system and the muscular contractions. A weak heart can be about our lack of fitness or how we take on life. So in the old days, that was a common diagnosis, talking about that person had a weak heart. They weren't able to take on life. They, they were pushing against a lot of other resistance besides that which is in their body. Uh, infarcts, attacks, um, and severe chest pain, again, those are blockages and a lack of. It can also be a shock. So uh, when we talk about treating an, a, um, an attack of the heart, there's a, an acupuncture point at the base of the left um, pinky nail. So pressing on this point right at the base of this nail can potentially buy an individual enough time to make a 911 call or if someone is helping the individual to also give them a little bit more time to get organized and to seek um, proper support. And it's an important first aid um, acupuncture point to uh, know and understand. Uh, heartburn. Frequently we confuse a pain in the heart with uh, indigestion and so much so that people will go on and I've had this happen twice in my practice where uh, a pacemaker was used to establish rhythm again in the heart thinking it was a heart problem when the uh, the rhythm didn't correct with the pacemaker they were still going on to have spasms and palpitations after the surgery and here it was the innervation of um, the heart looking like it was being impacted by indigestion and it was actually heartburn. And when the heartburn was addressed, the heart managed to reestablish a rhythm. So maybe an unnecessary surgery was corrected by something that was related but not related. And 
there's way more explanation that can go on with that, but I'm going to leave this one at that point too. So we always want to seek a doctor's advice when we're experiencing symptoms, but of course we don't want to wait and look after our heart at that point in time. We want to have some proactive awareness about how we can support this muscle in our heart. We start to see symptoms of blood pressure or fluid retention, inflammation, which can be addressed and identified through proper blood work by looking at the um, high, sensitive, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, homocysteine, urate, all these uh, inflammation markers that can give us a clue that we're running into some trouble and are going to need some um, support with regards to the uh, overall health of the body, we can say. Fitness and uh, fitness tests and stress tests, these are old standards that are coming under question many of the times to uh, ascertain what exactly is going on with the heart. Um, knowing that we're fit or not fit is something that we come to understand ourselves. We notice that we're breathing more heavily when we go for a walk or going up and down stairs. This is an opportunity to decide that we need to spend more time exerting ourselves if you, it's a muscle, again, the heart is a muscle, it will not be fit if you do not continue to um, stretch its boundaries at times so that it can grow stronger. ECGs are wonderful for detecting um, maybe uh, symptoms that are not so present of mind to us. So it can give us an idea about right bundle branch blocks, for instance, which often does not provide any symptomology, but it's an indication that the heart is not getting the nervous stim stimulation properly and adequately. Again, it's an electrolyte issue. So in pharmacy, I noticed that we uh, often had uh, a, sort of a protocol that you would frequently see anybody experiencing any kind of cardiovascular symptoms. So it's generally a, a statin, a blood thinner, a beta blocker, or uh, to control the rhythm and slow the heart down. But imagine that we're, we're trying to thin the blood. So we're in a compromised state of narrowing of blood vessels. We are thinking we have to address elevated cholesterol when really the, the body is using cholesterol to patch the cardiovascular walls of our circulatory system. And we're controlling the stress that the heart is experiencing, either mental stress or physical stress by slowing it down and then hopefully controlling the rhythm. So are these cures? No, we're actually just managing the symptoms. So we have to encourage people to remove the poisons of the heart. And the poisons of the heart, when I was promoting ACE inhibitors, that was one of the um, pharmaceuticals I had been responsible for educating medical doctors around. Um, we rarely talked about what were the lifestyle patterns of people that were requiring these things at some point. So definitely poisons of the heart, stress, our pace and haste of life. Um, having a pet to uh, <laughs> support us when we're uh, under a lot of stress is very helpful. Um, eliminating things like smoking, alcohol, assessing heavy metals in our bodies and reducing the inflammation due to toxicities from accumulation of bacteria, fungus, and other diseases that could be overt or unbeknownst to us. So the four cures, let's talk about that now quickly. The four cures are always about exercise and creating circulation and cleansing through all our filtering organs, including the lungs, the kidneys, and the, the liver, of course. So it was always one of my pet peeves about um, some of the magazines promoting uh, circulation to look fit and buff, but it's all about circulation is to cleanse and filter and get rid of um, bacteria and metabolic byproduct. People frequently that get injured when they've uh, been exercising too harshly become sick because they are no longer able to filter out 
the uh, byproducts through exercise. So cleaning up our diet and addressing bacteria, that's uh, a constant. I would also say that we have to clean up our emotions. So negative thinking will impact our cardiovascular walls throughout our circulatory system and cause damage. And then therefore the body needs to repair the damage by producing more cholesterol. Eggs are not a form of cholesterol that we need to uh, address. And more on that another time. So supplements are also one of the four cures. Why? Because if we're not eating a healthy diet and we're short at times, we can fill in the gaps. We, as I mentioned earlier, stress will burn through a lot of our minerals and vitamins because we have a higher demand on account of our lifestyles. So meditation, I would, I'm going to throw that in as my fifth so that we can calm the mind, so we can calm the heart, and then we can speak more authentically through our, our heart and our um, bigger purpose of life comes through because the heart is all about our soul. And that's where we talked about um, in my class on heart education that we, we need to become lion-hearted. So speaking through our truth, through our heart, helps us live a more positive life and we are calmer on account of it. So that was a quick synopsis. I'm happy to share more information with you and thanks for tuning in. It's a huge topic and we'll do more. Thank you.